new parts. High performance at high pressure. Rebuilding a first stage head. As always, and for your safety, before you start any service work, be sure to turn off any power, depressurize anything you're working on, and be careful of hot surfaces. Valve removal. Begin by loosening the tube connections. Unscrew the two nuts and pull the tubing away. View inside the tubes. Any excess carbon buildup may indicate the need to decarbonize the tubes. For this project, you do not need to remove the valve head from the cylinder. However, if you prefer to remove it, such as to replace the head gasket, we suggest placing location marks on head and cylinder. This can be done by using a center punch and making matching peen marks on each component. Make a single mark on the first stage components, two marks on second stage, three on third, and so forth. When reassembling, simply realign the marks. Next, remove the four head bolts and pry the head loose from the cylinder. These are cast iron parts, so exercise care so as not to damage the underside of the head or the top ledge of the cylinder. Using a razor blade and Scotch-Brite, remove the head gasket and any debris from the underside of the head and the top ledge of the cylinder, but be careful not to get any droppings into the cylinder. Now remove the retainer bolts using a 6 mm Allen key. With the bolts off, lift off the discharge and the suction valve covers. This will reveal the valves inside. If a valve is stuck inside due to carbon residue or corrosion, spray CRC into each pocket and let it soak for several hours. At that point, and using a pair of pliers, you should be able to lift the valve out by grabbing the hex nut. You'll notice the copper gasket on top and the copper gasket inside. If the inside gasket is stuck, use the O-ring tool to lift it out. This tool is available from new parts. Discard the old gaskets as they should not be reused. With the valves removed, let's test them to ensure they are functioning properly. The suction and discharge valves are tested in the same ways. Firstly, check the plate movement against the spring. This can be done by simply pressing on the plates using a dull prod or screwdriver. Be sure not to bend or mar the plate. Make sure that the plate fully strokes without interference. Test it all the way around. The next step is to verify that the valve plates are fully sealing. This test is conducted by filling the cavities with light machine oil such as mineral spirits. If the fluid retains in the cavities, this is a good indication that the valve still seals. If either fails a test, it should be discarded. Normally, these valves cannot be rebuilt. Also, the valves must be cleaned and decarbonized using a solvent. A word of caution, all solvent residue must be removed prior to placing these parts back into a breathing air compressor. Now let's inspect the pockets in which the valves are held. Make sure there is no debris or carbon in them. If there is, use the same decarbonizing solvent and Scotch-Brite to clean these surfaces. Also, let's check the head bolt holes to make sure those threads are intact and haven't been pulled. If so, these can sometimes be reconstructed using thread inserts. Okay, with all parts tested, inspected, and cleaned, the head is now ready to be reconstructed. Valve Installation Using fresh copper gaskets, insert one into each pocket. Make sure it seats well down inside. Now, let's install the discharge valve. It's the one with the less shallow lip on the bottom side. Note that both valves get installed with the nut facing upwards. Place a fresh gasket on top, making sure it's seated all the way around. Now, install the suction valve and notice the suction valve has a deeper lip, which matches the lip inside. Place a copper gasket on top, making sure everything is down in there tight. 
Install the discharge valve cover, the suction valve cover, screw the bolts down by hand, and then, using the torque wrench, tighten them the rest of the way to 18 to 20 foot-pounds. Make sure to tighten using a cross-hatch pattern. Now, let's reconnect the tubes.